Today I'm going to be taking a look at a classic cassette four track from days gone by. Uh, it was a very popular and well-known cassette four track. I'm talking about the Fostex X18. Now this was my very first multi-tracker. Uh, again, it's a four track cassette recorder. I purchased this brand new in 1994 and I recorded hundreds of songs with it. The biggest selling point about the X18 was that it was very, very affordable. Now keep in mind, back in, that, in this time, during the early to mid 90s, DAT decks were all the rage. Digital audio tape was the medium of choice for a lot of producers and studios. And at that time, some of the most popular DAT decks were the Alessis Adat and the Tascam DA88. But these machines were extremely expensive and the average everyday home musician could not afford them, but they could afford a Fostex X18. The recording quality is surprisingly good for such an affordable machine. Now to give you some of the specs, it recorded at standard cassette speed, one and seven eighth inches per second. It had Dolby B noise reduction. The signal to noise ratio is 58 decibels or greater. And when you're using the recorder, the frequency response is between 40 Hertz to 12.5 kilohertz. And it also ran on a 12 volt DC adapter, which was included with the machine. The deck weighed under three pounds, which made it very, very light and portable. And you could also run it on batteries. Now, this thing took 10 AA batteries. Yes, you heard me correctly, 10 AA batteries. So if you were going to use batteries, uh, you needed quite a few of them. So I tended to use the adapter most of the time. There were four input channels and you could do simultaneous two track recording. Now on the downside, there was no master fader and there was no EQ whatsoever. However, there was a very useful effects send and effects return. And it also had sync in and sync out sockets, which was quite interesting for a deck uh, at this price point. It also had something called Teach Bus. Uh, basically, the Teach Bus was designed for teachers. Any signals going into the Teach Bus go directly to the headphone feed. Basically, a teacher in a language lab could use this to talk to their students individually or as a group. So I think in that regard, uh, this machine was aimed at uh, language teachers and schools and language labs. It had an LED bar graph metering, which was nice and bright. You also had uh, selector switches on channels one and two, where you could select the input level. You could choose high, medium, or low input levels on channels one and two. It also had a punch in and out socket for foot switch. It had a stereo headphone socket. And very interestingly, there was also a pitch control dial, which would adjust the speed by 10%. So you could decrease or increase the speed by 10%. Now, something I always loved about the X18, the pan, the, the, each uh, track had their own individual pan setting. And I used to find it surprisingly good. Um, I found for this little machine, the pans were very sensitive. So moving the pan button ever so slightly created quite a difference in where that information sat in the stereo image. So compared to much more expensive machines that I've used, the pan on this thing was very sensitive and very, very good. Uh, there was also a mon mix output. Uh, while you're using headphones, the mon mix would really only give you what's on the tape, not what's going in at the channel inputs. And also, as with most four tracks, you could do track bouncing or track piggybacking, as some people call it. So you could, for example, record information on tracks one, two, and three, and then bounce all of that to track four. And I used to do that quite a bit. Overall, my impressions of the X18 are very, very positive. It was very reliable, well-designed, and very user-friendly. The recordings were always surprisingly good quality for a four track. And I actually used to have people make comments on my recordings 
saying, wow, this sounds really good. And when I told them I recorded it on a cassette four track, they often wouldn't believe me uh, because they were quite uh, impressed by the audio quality. It always gave very clean and clear recordings. Now, there was a time where I had to have the belt replaced in my X18. I had to have it sent away and serviced, and they installed a new belt and I believe also a new motor, if I'm not mistaken. What was happening was anytime I would do a recording, the recordings would start to drag. So the speed of the recording would slow down a bit and then come back to regular speed and then slow down again. It was very, very frustrating. But after the new belt was installed, that completely stopped doing that. Also, something I love about the X18, the faders were always extremely smooth. So overall, the Foss Dex X18 is a great little four track cassette deck from days gone by. If you see one secondhand, I would strongly recommend picking them up. Is there a, a space nowadays for cassette four tracks? People would argue about that. I would say yes. Um, if you just want a simple method of recording ideas, if you want a, a sketch recorder to take with you, uh, for if you go spend a weekend at the cottage, this would be a great little thing to take with you. Uh, of course, nowadays, everybody records on their laptop. Everybody has software that they can do multi-track recordings with. And of course, the digital quality is a lot better. But for nostalgia reasons and for simple practicality, I honestly think this little beast cannot be beat. It's still really, really cool and fun to use. That's my review of the Fostex X18. Thank you for watching. And as always, please subscribe to the channel. I post new videos frequently. And the best way to stay on top of all the latest reviews is to subscribe. Please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.